Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Um, hi, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Daisy Wang from University of California, Berkeley. She, her thesis is on um, probabilistic databases and how you manage them uh, in a relational database. Um, and she's going to be telling us more about it. So, Thanks. Over to you. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about extracting and querying probabilistic, um, probabilistic information in base store. In the past few years, the number of applications that needs to deal with large amounts of data um, has grown remarkably. The data underlying these applications are often uncertain, as is the analysis, which usually involve probabilistic inference and modeling. One such application is information extraction. So the amount of uh, text data in the world is, is significant and is growing at a faster speed, both in the enterprises and over the web. Information extraction is one type of text analysis which extracts entities such as person names and companies from a piece of text such as um, news articles or emails. So this is one piece of uh, text from New York Times article. Information extraction uh, uses probabilistic models to extract entities such as person, here Harold, or a company as, um, <coughs> such as McGraw-Hill from this piece of text. Moreover, uh, these probabilistic extraction models extract um, probabilities and uncertainties for possible extractions. For example, it might generate um, alternatives of extracting Big Apple as the company with a probability or uh, Big Apple as the city with a different probability. So these kind of extraction uh, generates probabilistic uh, data or entities. And one possible query over these probabilistic data could be which New York Times article mentions Apple as a company with top K uh, highest probability. Another application that also generates a large amount of probabilistic data is sensor networks. Um, the sensor readings are probabilistic. It's full of missing values and erroneous values um, because of, for example, uh, interference in the signals or low battery life and so on. If you are to uh, model these uh, uncertainties using a Gaussian distribution like a bell curve here, one possible query you ask on top of these probabilistic data is, what is the Gaussian distribution of the average temperature in a certain area? So other application that requires this probabilistic data analysis includes data integration systems where the entity resolution and schema mapping are usually probabilistic, and social networks where um, probabilistic inference and modeling are used to classify users and uh, predict user behaviors, and so on. In this talk, I will first describe what is the um, state of the, uh, what is the current approach in industry to perform probabilistic data analysis, and what are the problems. Then I will describe uh, my approach to perform probabilistic data analysis, which is implemented in a probabilistic database system called BaseStore. I will um, go into details on the new algorithm that we invented um, for probabilistic uh, relational uh, queries, and um, then talk about techniques to scale up these algorithms. I will finally conclude and talk about future work. So the standard approach in industry to perform probabilistic data analysis looks like this. You extract uncertain data from different real life systems, such as from text or sensor networks, put it into a relational database. At the data analysis time, all the raw data is extracted from the relational database, put it into a file, massage it into the right format, and feed it into statistical machine learning packages, such as R and MATLAB. Inside of these packages, um, probabilistic models are learned on top of the uncertain data, and a number of data analysis tasks are performed, such as inference, data cleaning, and aggregation. And the result of it is put back into the relational database as analytic result tables, on top of which the user is going to query on top of. There are at least two problems to this standard approach. The first one 
is the performance problem. As you can see that the data is stored inside of the database, while as the data processing analysis is done outside of the database, there is an expensive data transfer cost when the data set is large. Moreover, because the, all the computation is done outside of the database, all these benefits such as optimization and parallelization and indexing inside of the database is not utilized because database is only used as a data storage. So this is the performance problem. The second problem is information loss. In the standard database, only, uh, the, only the deterministic data is, can be stored. So in the standard approach, only the top one highest probability analytic result is stored in the database for people to query, which prematurely disregarding all the uncertainties and probabilities. Thus, the information loss. I will have one example illustrating this point. So this is the top one extraction um, of this piece of text from New York Times. As we can see, this top one extraction mistakenly um, missed the entity Big Apple as the city. But uh, uh, fortunately, these probabilistic uh, uh, extraction models um, have uh, give alternatives to possible extractions. And top K extraction, it uh, correctly extracted the Big Apple as the city. So for different document, this correct um, extraction comes at different K, top K, and the, the K is different um, for different documents, but usually it comes at uh, um, the first few um, top extractions. So, but in, if you imagine that you only have a deterministic database only storing the top one extraction and uh, running a query um, on top of it, for example, return all the articles with city equals to Big Apple, because the top one extraction miss Big Apple as the city, so it will return no documents. But if you are to consider the uncertainties and probabilities, um, then the, this query will return a set of documents um, with, uh, with articles that has Big Apple as a city with descending probability. Now these uh, results might not be the top one extraction, but they might as well, as well be the correct answer and what the user is asking for. In fact, it's uh, what the search engine is provided. It's a rank list of, uh, of results that is ordered by the probability. So this example illustrates that um, only querying over the top one extraction is not sufficient. What we want is to query over the full distribution of probabilistic um, data. And the problem of storing and querying over probabilistic data has been the focus of the probabilistic database literature for the past 10 years. So before the base store project, or before 2007, there has been a number of probabilistic data representation has been um, proposed. One is for Dal from Dalvi and Susu from University of Washington here, um, where the probability is attached to the rows in each table. For example, the probability of this tuple S1 exists is 0.8. Um, another representation is, uh, um, is proposed by uh, the TRIO project at Stanford, where they assume a more, much finer granularity of probability, attaching these probability to the attribute values instead of the rows, but both of these early representations assume independence between the uncertain values. Um, so it's very hard for them to represent the high dimensional distribution with complex correlation between these uncertain uh, values. So in fact, you can, um, for example, to represent the distribution of all possible extraction from information extraction using this kind of representation by um, storing all the each possible extractions with its associating probabilities um, one by one for all possible extractions. But if you have a sentence with uh, 30 tokens and each token has four possible labels here, person, company, location, or other, um, the number of possible extractions is 4 to the power of 30. And if you have lots of sentences in a corpus, it's impossible for you to store all possible extractions. Now, modeling the uncertainty and reason with it has been a focus of statistical machine learning literature. And they come up with uh, probabilistic graphical models to compactly represent high dimensional distributions with correlations. So graphical model has been studied as an efficient representation of these high dimensional distributions. This is an example of graphical model. 
So a graphical model contains uh, random variables known as uh, these nodes in the graph and the, cor the correlations between the random variable, which are, which are the edges between these uh, ran uh, nodes. So here the edges, so this uh, random variable is over the piece of text that we've seen before in the New York uh, Times article. And this correlation is basically saying that uh, the labels of a specific token is correlated with the token itself and the previous label. So this is a set of uh, uh, local correlations which is converted or uh, factorized from a high dimensional distribution that we seen earlier um, based on the factorization and conditional independence that exist between these random variables. So if now we have the same number of, sentence, uh, number of tokens in the sentence and the same uh, possible number of labels, the, uh, the size of the graphical model is merely 30 um, factors and each of, the, each of them is a 4 by 4 2 dimensional matrix. So this uh, graphical model encodes the full distribution of 4 to the power of 30 which is exponential to the number of tokens and reduce uh, the size to linear to the number of tokens. So graphical model is, uh, through this example, is a very efficient representation um, of the distribution. So in my thesis, um, I designed and developed a system probabilistic database system called Base Store that natively support these probabilistic graphical models and uh, uh, natively support the inference algorithms on top of these models. So the picture now looks like this. The uncertainty, uncertain uh, data are directly stored in Base Store. Um, in which both relational query engines and the graphical models and inference engines are supported. So graphical models include both uh, directed and undirected models. Um, between these two, uh, two engines, the query constraints and probabilities are passed between each other. On top of base store, the user can ask a query on top of uncertain data and the model and get distribution and probabilities as answer. I'm getting the feeling that understanding this graphical model is going to be important to understand what follows. Is that right? Um, yes. Can you back up one slide? <laughs> I'm not sure I got it. So you've got one, is it true you've got one node per token and one node per label? Is yes. That, is that what's going on? Yes. Now, like Apple or Big Apple, I mean Big Apple is a token as well as Apple in this model? Uh, so in this model, Big is one token and Apple is one token. And but then you're gonna you want to assign a label to Big Apple, or you uh, yeah, I want to say, sign a label to Big and Apple independently, so I can sign both as company or Apple as a city. Okay, but then here each of these tokens, I mean, this is a, undoubtedly a simplified graph, but each of each of these tokens has only got an edge to one label. Is that? Is that uh, just a simplification? I mean, it seems like they're going to have edges to multiple labels because there's different choices so with CR different probabilities. Mm -hmm. So um, the linear chain CRF model only has correlation token with its own label, but this label is also correlated with the previous label. So in the big Apple case, it, um, if one of the Apple has some um, confidence of label as company, and if the previous label is also company, then um, its confidence is it's still the top one. The top one is <coughs> the top one of the previous. It's not only, uh, so the CRF model only uh, not only models the top one, it models the whole distribution. This example what you shown is the top one. So uh, you're assigning only one label per token. So this is a random variable. This uh, random variable could be given any of the possible labels. Um, so it's a random variable that could be give multiple values, different kind of values. But top one can only give one values. But uh, uh, to Phil's question, because the label, are cor the current label is correlated with the previous label, so we can capture the correlation between two uh, pair of tokens being labeled the same as company, or the, uh, only one token is being labeled uh, as city. So there is a carry-on correlation. Although there is no token directly correlated with the previous label, but because they are correlated, uh, it's captured, the correlation is captured uh, using this clique. So that's why you have 30 factors in 4 by 4, right? So for each one, you have four possible labels, and the four possible labels are a function of the four possible labels of the previous two. Yes, yes. So this is a two-dimensional matrix. Given a particular label, it's uh, this uh, matrix saying that what is the um, prob uh, confidence 
of this um, pair of labels. Okay. Is there, is there anything magic about doing only one back or, or pairs as opposed to triples or things of that sort? So there are more complicated models than linear chain CRF called semi um, CRF model that uh, try to group uh, rather than just looking at unigrams, look at uh, group, try to group tokens into one and assign a label to this, these groups. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just now studied here um, because CRF, linear chain CRF is kind of the state of the art and more complicated models are used for more, more complicated corpus. And um, there's no reason why we cannot support it here because Space Store is supposed to design for uh, general graphical models. It's just that for this example, we're not. Okay, so let me ask you a really dumb question. So you have Big Apple. Why would you ever put a probability, a, a reasonable high probability that big, big refers to a city or a location? Uh, sorry. So you, you have Big Apple, and, and you're trying to you're trying to identify Big Apple as with some probability being a location, city, New York, uh, and and so you you so I don't know exactly how you proceed here, but You've got the word big, and you want to put some sort of label or probabilistic distribution of what, what tag it goes with. Why would, the, why would the tag for big ever be uh, likely to look like a location? Um, yes, so big in this case might not be directly labeled as company as the top one extraction, but coupled with um, Apple, it's together because we are, we are computing the joint distribution and uh, the top one for the whole sentence not for not we're not doing classification for each token at a time now I agree with you that maybe um, for for this kind of the model to to deal with uh, uh, multiple token entities is a little bit hard um, but uh, it's still possible because um, when you look at Apple it's still a lot of the times it is labeled with uh, with the company instead of uh, uh, as the city instead of the company. So, and then coupled with the yeah, big. I don't, think, I don't think you'd ever see Apple by itself without, without the word big in front of it referring to anything other than, other than the fruit or the company, company. I don't think you, people don't refer to New York as the Apple, as far as I know. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, but that's not really part of your system, yeah. right? You just are assuming that you have a reasonable extraction system that gives you this information, and then your job is to take it from then on. Yeah, so that's more of uh, like what, what the what the CRF can do, and I agree that the linear CRF has its shortcomings, but uh, this is not the focus of the thesis. So, okay, so I I, um, I talked about one. Um, <coughs> that the graphical model is an efficient implementation or, or uh, representation of the um, high, high dimensional distribution. So uh, my thesis is about how to um, natively support these graphical models in general um, inside of the uh, relational database and their inference algorithms. So um, it's both stored, uh, it stores the uncertain data uh, natively inside of the relational database and support both relational query engine and inference query engine. And uh, the user can ask query to get probabilities and distributions as answers. So the base store basically, um, it's an integrated <coughs> system that um, combines the power of large scale data processing from relational um, database and the power of advanced uh, analytics from statistical machine learning literature and combine in a single system to provide a framework for users to ask query over uncertain data and do probabilistic analysis. Um, so the base store can solve the problem, for example, information loss, where uncertainties and probabilities are, um, are, are lost by using these uh, prob graphical models to capture the probabilities and uncertainties and use inference um, engines on top of it. And it can solve the problem of performance um, because uh, the relational um, engine here has the indexing and optimization and all these benefits. Um, we implemented based on top of Postgres 8.4. So my contribution, technical contribution, consists of three parts. First one is uh, efficient implementation of graphic representation of graphical models as first class objects inside of the relational database, and uh, implementation of inference um, efficiently um, e using SQL in database. 
Second one is inventing new algorithms for uh, relational, probabilistic relational query, both to compute top K results as well as result distributions. Because these al algorithms are probabilistic, instead of deterministically querying over the top one extraction, we are doing probabilistic queries beyond top one <coughs> over the whole distribution. Um, uh, the results show that we can reduce the false negative by as far as 80%. And lastly, um, I come up with a set of um, uh, techniques to scale up these algorithms, um, for example, query-driven extraction and so on, and achieve orders of magnitude speed up compared to the standard approach, which um, does all the computation outside of the database uh, exhaustively agnostic about what the user um, is asking for. So the base store system is general in the sense that it supports both uh, uh, directed and undirected model. It can support applications such as text analysis as well as sensor networks. Um, but uh, for the rest of the talk, for simplicity, I'm only going to use information extraction as the driving example. One question. Yeah. So there's been some work on taking data mining models and applying them to databases efficiently. So would you say that your work can be Classified exactly, or is it something? So different? there's two. Um, there's um, two sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. I can see my work from. Uh, you can see my work from two different angles. One is the prob uh, One is definitely the um, data mining and statistical methods and supporting it inside of the database. And uh, I don't. Uh, I don't aware there are a lot of work that supports uh, text analysis algorithm or text mining inside of the database using probabilistic extraction models. And the other uh, on the other side is more novel or where we originally coming from is probabilistic database. So we deal with probabilities um, in addition to the statistical methods. We, um, we support probabilistic relational operators on top of these distributions. So I don't think that those work deal with that. So okay, so that's the introduction, some basics of base store. What graphical model do we support in information extraction? What are the data model? What query do we support? And what are the query semantics? So the graphical model that we um, support for information extraction is called conditional random fields. It's a state-of-the-art information extraction model, very much like HMM. Uh, this is a piece of six-token address string, and a conditional random field model rendered on top of it looks like this, very similar to what we've seen before. These nodes are um, associating with each tokens in the text, and these are observed. Their value are fixed. Um, and these are random variables whose value is to be inferred. So we don't know the value of these. They could be street name or country or states and so on. So CRF model encodes the distribution of all possible extractions. Um, over this piece of text. So two possible extractions over this piece of text looks like this. So the extraction is over the entire string, and the probability is on the right-hand side. Each extraction gives a specific label to each token. And for different extractions, you can give different labels to a specific string, uh, token. And there's many more such possible extractions, and we are omitting here. So the base store system extends relational data model to support probabilistic data and probabilistic graphical models. So in the example of information extraction, the text is stored in a probabilistic table called token table, which has one probabilistic attribute, label, whose value is to be inferred. And each row in the token table is a unique occurrence of a token identified by the document ID and the position where the token is taken from. Um, so the possible world over this probabilistic table is encoded in the CRF model. And the random variables in this CRF model um, is mapped to the attribute values in this table um, like this. It's not actually stored, but the mapping is like this. So the CRF model consists, as we said, is a, a set of local correlations or a set of factors. And they are stored in a relational format as a set of, um, uh, so it's stored in a relation that contains the factors of all the unique tokens in a corpora. So, and each factor is represented as a set of rows. For example, the token Berkeley being labeled city preceded by street name has a high confidence of 25. So it's a set of such entries. Um, so the query on top of such a um, uh, probabilistic database is over the text in the token table. Can you do the in the original CRF model, the factors are not just uh, are, are, are not, not just functions of the labels of the earlier token and the next token, right? But you could have 
these features which are function of all the data. Yeah, definitely. But so how do you capture that in your model? Uh, you mean if if we have further on what, uh, for example, this label is has a long edge between uh, this one and this one? No, no. I, it's basically a function of any value of the input, right? Because it's a conditional model. This label of the first token it could be a function of the fifth word in principle, right? Because it's a conditional model. So how to capture such such features? So you're still talking about um, this linear chain conditional random fields. I'm still talking about this linear chain uh, so, in the random variables, but right. the conditioned variables are fixed, right? So this label of a particular random variable it could be a function of any of the of the entire input, which is which is why people do conditional random fields and not HMOs. So how do you capture such such features? Um, so one thing is um, it's uh, the um, the local correlation still only concern with three random variables, right? Given the a specific token, the relationship is between its label and previous label. So the correlation is modeled by a set of features, and these features are general. These features are used to generate these factor tables, and this factor table is just a materialization of these features on different tokens. So the, uh, the queries is on top of the text in the token table, and it can, uh, includes both the relational operators and the inference operator. The relational operators, of course, and um, not only the uh, deterministic selection, project, join, and aggregates, but also contain its probabilistic counterparts, the probabilistic selection, project, join, and aggregates. Moreover, we support inference operator, include top k inference and marginal inference. Marginal inference is over a small subset of the random variables in the graphical model. So one probabilist, uh, well, one query on top of such a text is give me all the tokens and the top k labels for the uh, first ten documents. So we also talk about probabilistic selection, join, and marginal inference later in the discussion. So these kind of queries um, follows the possible world semantics. The possible world semantics say that starting from a probabilistic database DP. Uh, it can be extended to a set of possible worlds from D1 to Dn. And the probabilistic query can be uh, applied individually on these possible worlds and generating a new world, Qd1 to Qdn, which represent the resulting probabilistic database, Qdp. However, we cannot execute the query through this path because the number of possible worlds could be exponential to the number of random variables. So a major part of um, the, the work that I've done is how to directly apply probabilistic queries over the probabilistic database and get the resulting uh, probabilistic database as an answer without going through uh, the possible world, to expand to the possible worlds. So with that, I'm going to the details of the algorithm. Uh, I will go into details of uh, the, uh, an example, how to compute the top k uh, query results and uh, um, briefly over how to compute the marginal distribution. They are using different inference algorithms. So what class of queries are you using? What is based on hand producing queries? Um, it w uh, I will have a uh, uh, slide later talking about different kind of queries, but um, basically in, in terms of inference, we, uh, we can support top k or marginal. In terms of probabilistic queries, we can um, support different kinds of select, project, join, and aggregation. The previous work you said, Dan and... Uh, that paper also had a hardness research, right? Certain class of queries, computing on a probabilistic database is mm -hmm. computationally hard. Has, so, yeah, a sharpie hard. So those class of queries, you can also not handle because you fall to the same model. Um, I do handle aggregates, and uh, um, the reason, I think, the reason why the it's sharp, it's, the inference algorithm is not um, poly-time algorithm. It is NP-hard algorithms. It doesn't say that the computation bottleneck goes away. Mm -hmm. It's just because that uh, probabilistic, these graphical models more efficiently um, use this conditional independence. In a practical case, there are a lot of conditional independencies. So it factorizes the large uh, distribution into local distributions. So it makes the problem much efficient. OK. Um, so this um, example is um, include probabilistic join and top k inference. So it's basically compute the top k join results between two email corpus that uh, contain the same company name. And the result of this join has to be uh, bigger than the threshold t. 
So imagine that you have two input documents represented as two distributions of possible extractions using CRF model. A probabilistic join on top of it generate a new distribution. So say that we simplify the query and only compute the top one um, probabilistic join result. This top one join result is not necessarily computed from the top one extractions of the input document because the top one extraction of the input document might not join each other. In fact, it might be computed from top two, top three, top ten, or top a hundred extractions from the input document. Only that the later two um, uh, the uh, join results might uh, not be bigger than a threshold t, so will be filtered. But the insight here is that for a different pair of document, in order to compute um, the top one join result, we cannot st uh, um, deterministically specify the top k extractions that we need from each document and compute the top k and top one join result or top k join result. We have to incrementally um, uh, fetch the highest probability extraction as we are computing the top k um, join results. So I, the algorithm to compute this um, query in, involves three parts. The first one is Viterbi dynamic programming algorithm, which computes top k extraction. The second part is the incremental Viterbi, which gives you incremental access to the um, next best extraction, giving you a rank list of extractions. The third part is probabilistic rank join algorithm, which takes the input of incremental Viterbi and compute the top k join incrementally. So it seems like the only correlation you're modeling is um, the correlation of different extractions over the same document, right? If there are different documents, yes. those extractions are deemed independent. Yes. And if, even if you have different CRF models on the same document, the different models, those extractions are also deemed independent. Uh, can you say it again? If you have two different CRF models, let's say one is for extracting cities, the other is for extracting countries, but they are different models, and I'm just feeding them through different operators. Uh, yes, if, is, if they are <coughs> in separate models, yes, they are independent, but usually yeah, you yes. model in the same, uh, if you are extracting several entities, you usually train the same models to extract. Not necessarily, I may have, I don't know, I may have an address extractor, I may have a citation extractor, I just run the same document to both. But you, you might have more accuracy if you uh, train the uh, integrated model, because maybe the person and ad address appear uh, one before the other, or um, the person and telephone number one, one after the other, things like that. So this kind of correlation do have, uh, yeah, do appear in the text. So I will go into a little bit detail for each of them, but uh, the Viterbi dynamic programming algorithm is a standard algorithm over CRF to compute top K, and the incremental Viterbi and probabilistic rank join are new algorithms. So the Turby algorithm, the contribution here that we um, that I did is to implement it um, natively inside of the database using SQL instead of uh, uh, and uh, measure the performance compared to the Java implementation outside of the database. So the Viterbi is a dynamic programming algorithm that computes a V matrix. It's a two-dimensional uh, matrix. Uh, each cell in in V V I Y stores the top K partial segmentation ending with uh, position I with label Y. As you can see, it's a recursive algorithm because VIY is recursively computed from VI minus 1, adding this additional step with uh, weighted sum of features and, and taking the maximum uh, on top of everything. So the Viterbi implementation in, inside of Postgres uh, looks like this query plan. Um, we use uh, with recursive join inside of Postgres, joining over the token table and the factor table, which are the relational representation of the text and the model. So you, we are computing VIY recursively from VI minus 1 and followed by group by aggregation, which basically computes the maximum. So after measuring the performance of this uh, implementation uh, with the Java open source CRF, um, implementation, we find it's five times slower. And the reason is that the, the way that we are representing the factors, so we are representing each factor as a set of rows. Yep. Question. So what comes out of this VW program is not a probability value, right? It's the unnormalized uh, Yes, so this is probability. only part of the main uh, loop. So you still have to but backtrack. How do you normalize it without computing all the uh, the normalization, you still have to uh, use some product algorithm, which is very similar to this recursive algorithm, to compute the normalization factor. And then you just um, 
do the normal, uh, normalization factor over the probability that you compute from the top one. And uh, you get the probability. But this normalization is hard, right, if I understand correctly? Normalization so is the same. Uh, no, no, it's the same complexity as this one because you are basically summing over, we are replacing max with sum. So can that also be implemented in SQL? Yes, yes, yes. It's also implemented in SQL in a very similar fashion. So as we said, this is um, five times slower because the factor is represented as a set of rows. In, and uh, what we did is replace uh, this representation using an array data type, which is supported in Postgres. And, uh, and we also developed a number of uh, aggregation functions on top of the array data type. So this is a new implementation which has the similar structure, use recursive join, but uses array data types and aggregation functions, um, which uh, result in a more compact representation of these uh, array factors, um, a um, uh, better main memory behavior and more efficient join. So the result of this is, um, is as efficient as the Java implementation and sometimes even more efficient. So this access size tells us that um, using SQL inside of the database, we can efficiently implement inference algorithm, complicated inference algorithm over graphical models. But you're comparing a Postgres implementation. Uh, yes, they are not the same, but um, we are not trying to beat them. We're just trying to say that um, in, in a set-oriented processing inside of the database, we can achieve um, similar performance to, it's not um, but I mean, you, for example, you could have taken a different approach. You can say that I'm just going to build a native, a new operator, which is not going to work. It's going to natively implement the Yes, code. yes, yes, yes. So if we, I agree. So the other way to implement it is uh, uh, a new operator. Instead of um, posing this as a query, um, we implement it as an operator. But um, there are two major benefits of implementing this way. One is um, that this, this whole, uh, entire uh, query plan uh, is representing an inference algorithm can then be optimized with the rest of the relational algebra in a larger query. So based on different uh, statistics over the data, we can optimize it um, uh, more nicely, the, the inference implementation with the rest of the relational algebra. And second, um, because it's on top of the database instead of Inside of the database, it's more portable to other relational databases. But are there very practical examples where you want to combine this with other relational operators? Oh, exactly. We will see to that. And this is um, so this kind of native uh, the native implementation of this uh, inference algorithm make it possible for you to co-optimize relational operators with these inference operators. While well, as if you hard code everything, it's a black box. You cannot co-optimize. But you have some clear examples where you can. Uh, yeah. That is necessary. Yeah. Okay, so the second part of the algorithm is incremental Viterbi, uh, which is a new variation of the Viterbi algorithm over CRF. The input is the top one extraction of the Viterbi and the states, which is the V matrix. So here, um, instead of deterministically say I want top K extraction, it can um, get the extraction incrementally. So the algorithm is basically incrementally compute some of the cells, um, new elements in the cell, uh, in the cell of the V matrix, and uh, using this V matrix to extract next best extraction, resulting in a list of extractions ranked by the probability. So the complexity of this incremental Viterbi is uh, um, big O T is the number of tokens, Y plus K, Y is the number of labels, and K is extraction depth, log Y plus K is interestingly less uh, or um, is more efficient than the Viterbi algorithm, which means that every time we fetch a new extraction is more efficient than computing the top one. So using the result of uh, incremental Viterbi, um, this, the result is feed into the rank join algorithm, which is computed between each pair of joinable documents. So each document can be represented as a set of um, possible extractions. It has um, its join keys, and possible extractions is listed in the decreasing order of the probability. So this is the probability, and it's decreasing, and k is the extraction depth. So the rank join is computed between these two tables or list of extractions. And what it does is to, uh, it to compute the next best extraction incrementally while it's computing the top K join result. And as soon as it computes the top K join result, it stops the um, incremental inference and return the results. So your output format has only the token labels, right? So take a big 
it will say that big is assigned to city and urban is assigned to city. Yes. But if I want to say get me the maximum segments, which is probably the most natural usage of it, I want to find the maximum segments which which are cities. I want I want it on Big Apple mm -hmm. as a single segment. I have to write it in SQL. Uh, so it's. Uh, um, so what you have is Apple as a city, Big Apple as a city, um, and uh, the, there is a way to write label, it. Right? So you just label Big as city and Apple as city. That's what you get as part of the output. Yes. Right? So when you want to ex extract city as, segments. yeah, as as segments, um, there is. Um, I tried SQL, SQL for it. Yeah, there is a SQL for it. I, I forgot. I actually used it, but you can actually concatenate uh, adjacent. Um, tokens that of the same label and put them into the same um, segment. But the advantage of native implementation would be you can return segments. Yeah, but then, yes, I agree. Um, you can probably return segments, but you can return a segment. I forgot the operator's name that I used, but you can still do that. Um, so, so the rank join algorithm only um, join between two. Uh, individual documents, but if you want to join two sets of the documents, then you have to compute a set of rank join algorithms simultaneously between one outer document um, and a set of joinable inner document at the same time. So there is tech, um, details on how to share computation and how to um, maintain states and so on. So this is a new algorithm that based on the rank join algorithm. So this is a detailed look at one uh, type of probabilistic uh, query. The reason why we study probabilistic uh, query is to look beyond the top one extraction, to look at uh, how to query over the full distribution of uh, probabilistic uh, data. So this is an evaluation to look at how these probabilistic queries can improve um, answer quality. So the query is probabilistic join, and the corpus that we run on is uh, 200 hand-labeled signature blocks in Enron corpus. So it's hand-labeled, so we are able, then this is the ground truth. We are comparing the deterministic selection over top one extraction with the result of probabilistic selection. So the query is a number of uh, uh, selection conditions over different attributes. So basically, for example, we want all the articles that company equals to Apple. And uh, we are measuring the false negative rate. So it means that the missing, missing results are uh, missing errors. Um, so we are com uh, comparing this baseline with the probabilistic selection, and we see that the uh, false negative errors can be um, reduced by as much as 80%. I'm a little lost. So isn't what, why is this experiment important? You're building a previously known model, right? so their quality will transfer to you. So uh, it's because before, the standard approach is only querying over the top one extraction. If we are able to query over more than top one over the top A extraction or the whole distribution, and then still um, using the threshold probability bigger than T to control the false positives, then we get better answer. So in this experiment, we show that we can uh, reduce the false negative uh, while keeping the false positive roughly the same. The, the, the reason why it's impossible, no, no, so the standard approach, I'm, I'm comparing to the standard approach, where only the top one. Sure, but the, but the reason is um, you don't know which, which K you should be storing. And maybe I, I have follow on, I, I, I think, yeah, the next uh, example is we have to query over the whole distribution instead of just the top K. Top one, do the same comparison with top ten. Let's say. I mean, how would this chart? Yeah. So, um, so there are two aspects. One is you don't know k, what k you should get for different kind of queries. So Second, you, you you might need the full distribution, as I will show you in the next example. How did you come up with these uh, uh, queries? I guess uh, are they handpicked? I mean, they can be rare queries, uh, which doesn't make. So um, the, the query that we picked here are um, so on the company and it's um, over different um, company entities. So we picked all the entities that exist in this corpus. So basically, um, company equals to uh, equals to a number of different values, and these values are picked from what is existing in this corpus. So it's a set of um, queries that um, we we computed 
and uh, aggregate the, the values here, the false negatives here. So it's just over one end? It's not like the example where you do this kind of join and stuff? So this is a probabilistic selection, yes. Um, so for probabilistic join here, um, we are also comparing the baseline of join over deterministic top one and uh, the probabilistic join. And the query is to find a pair of uh, signature blocks that um, has the same that, that's from the same company. Um, and x axis is uh, increasing from 1 to 30, looking beyond, more and more beyond the um, top one extraction. And we are measuring the false negative rate. As we can see, that probabilistic join, as it looking more and more um, beyond top one extraction, looking into the full distribution, it reduces false negative from 0.4 to 0.25, uh, a 30% drop of false negatives, while false positives remain roughly the same. What is the false positive? False positive is uh, meaning that you no, discover. I, I, is, oh, okay. the um, I think it's pretty decent number, around um, 90. I think I, I I don't remember, but I think it's pretty decent number, and it doesn't change when we use probabilistic selection or not. So, in the last part, uh, we talked about how to compute top k. Um, uh, results over probabilistic join, uh, no, uh, over probabilistic queries. So that this example is computing marginal distribution over probabilistic aggregation. So the aggregation, this query is to compute the distribution of the number of companies that we can uh, find extract from the articles that also contain a keyword Apple. So this is the query plan. We first do an join to find all the articles that contains the keyword Apple. And uh, the, the documents are represented as a uh, distribution uh, of possible extractions. What does the query mean in English? Do you want to find pairs of documents such that one of them has the token called document? As called a document no, I, I want to. The second one has got a label called company? What does it mean? So, because we are representing this as a, as a token table, right? So, this basically, it's just uh, give me all the documents that so contains Apple. 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 Yes, yes. So this is a, just a self-join, say, give me all the because first, you, first you compute. It, that's why you have to do a joint to reconstruct it. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so we first compute the number of uh, the, the set of documents that contain the keyword Apple. Then they are um, probabilistic distribution of possible extractions. Then goes to probabilistic selection and count. And the result is basically a histogram of counts um, possible. Um, it's a count distribution. So we cannot answer this query by using Viterbi algorithm because Viterbi computes the top k extraction. So what we want, the, the inference algorithm that we can use, that we used is a um, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo inference algorithm uh, called Gibbs sampler, which basically computes a small subset of possible extractions uh, according to this full extraction. And then this small subset of extraction it goes to probabilistic selection and count, and which result in a set of counts, which are then computed into a count histogram. Um, as we see an example here, different inference algorithm is needed to compute different uh, probabilistic queries. In fact, uh, so this is a Gibbs sampler, and we implement it inside, uh, efficiently inside of database using window functions. And in fact, we computed um, four inference, I computed four inference algorithm, including the Turby algorithm, some product, MCMC Gibbs sampler, and MCMC Metropolis Hastings. And the star is um, saying which inference algorithm can be applied to which type of queries. And uh, it, it can also be noted that the same type of query, for example, marginal over probabilistic join, can be um, uh, uh, answered by different inference algorithm, including some product and two MCMC algorithm. But there is a trade-off between accuracy and runtime, um, because some product is an exact algorithm, but it cannot deal with uh, a general graph, for example. So that's the algorithms. Um, so that uh, these algorithms solve the problem of information loss. We can query over the probabilistic distribution. The se next section uh, deal with the performance problem, which uh, we talks about a set of techniques to scale up uh, these algorithms. So the gist of um, or the uh, main intuition in the scale up tex technique is how to replace the exhaustive extraction with query driven extraction. 
So the traditional approach relies on exhaustive extraction because analysis done outside of the database agnostic about what the query is asking for. So you have to exhaustively extract all possible queries over all the documents. Um, but if you imagine you have a base store system that has an integrated uh, solution of both query engine and extraction engine, then you know when you are extraction what the query is, what the user is asking for. So you can prune away a lot of unrelated information um, at the extraction time. So that's what we rely on. So the techniques, so this query is uh, uh, very similar, trying to extract companies that uh, also, the, in the articles that also mention Apple as a company. So the techniques uh, include three. The first one is very simple, inverted index, um, because we have the document inside of the database and extraction inside of the database. So we are at the leisure of throwing away a, uh, of a bunch of documents that doesn't mention, doesn't mention the keyword um, that is in the query. The second technique is called minimizing the models, because when the uh, graphical models is rendered over the entire corpus, it's a huge model. But uh, the query that we are asking for only asks a very small subset of the random variables inside of this uh, graphical model. So we want to prune away the rest of the graphical model that is unrelated to these query nodes. So this is called minimizing the models. The third part is um, the general notion of try to push the uh, relational operators such as join and, uh, um, and selection into the inference process. So for answering this um, uh, query, we have an algorithm called early stopping Viterbi, which is trying to push probabilistic selection into the Viterbi inference algorithm. So a little bit more detail, inverted index, we basically use this token equals to Apple and use inverted index to quickly select a uh, set of documents that include this keyword. Um, that's very simple. And the second one is minimizing the models. So again, the key insight is that uh, query node is only a very small subset, so we want to prune away the, um, the large parts of the graphical model that is unrelated. For example, in this Bayesian network, and suppose that uh, node A is the query node, and which one we want to compute the dis uh, distribution or top, top K, and B is a random variable that uh, is observed or has the evidence, then uh, according to the um, Bayesian network, node A is independent of node C, D, and E given B. So we can prune away the rest of uh, the graphical model only inference over um, these two random variables. So very similarly on the, on the CRF model that, that I study, and the CRF model is rendered over each sentence independently um, in, in a single document. So between the sentences, there is no correlations. If you want to ask a query over one specific label in one sentence, then you can very safely prune away the rest of the sentences in a document. So I implement this minimizing the model using uh, a graph traversal um, inside of uh, 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 the transitive closure over graph inside of SQL. The third algorithm is Viterbi early stopping algorithm, which uses this probabilistic selection and try to push it into the Viterbi algorithm, which is computing this two-dimensional matrix. This is the uh, tokens in a sentence, Big Apple lands year 14 Super Bowl, and this is possible, uh, possible labels. So when you are computing the um, candidate partial segmentations, as denoted by these arrows, at position two, you see that none, none of these candidate partial segmentation points back to labeling Apple as the company. All of them say that Big Apple um, is labeled as city. So you can stop the inference there and toss this document away because it doesn't satisfy the probabilistic uh, condition that a label, uh, label has equals to app, uh, label has to be a uh, company without the full inference. So with these um, uh, scale-up techniques, this is uh, evaluation over New York Times data set, which is uh, seven gigabytes of uh, a million New York Times articles. Um, so if we are to run one of the, the queries that we've seen in the previous slide, um, without inverted index or, these, or, um, or none of these scale-up techniques, by exhaustively extract all the possible extractions and query on top of it, then we uh, need uh, thir around 13 hours to compute the whole corpus. Cost going to be amortized over all queries. Uh, yes, it, it will. Um, but uh, uh, when you do query driven, you can also uh, maintain the, the results of the previous queries that you executed. And uh, 
just like view maintenance. So it's basically you don't have to do it if you you are not asked. Um, so if we are to um, add in the scale up techniques, for example, um, that we talked earlier, so this graph is showing you the runtime of adding these techniques one at a time. So if we have inverted index to filter away all the documents that doesn't contain keyword Apple, um, then it reduces from 13 hours to 14 hours. Um, if we add in minimizing the models to, uh, to prune away the part of the graphical model that is not related to the query node, then it reduces from 14 minutes to 1.4 minutes, another factor of 10. And if we add on further the early stopping algorithm, then the runtime reduces from 1.4 minutes to 16 seconds. So we can query and get answer over a large data set um, in a matter of seconds. Um, so these techniques are very, very effective in pruning away the unrelated information to the queries. So this graph is showing you different kind of queries with different selectivity. Um, on the left hand side is higher selectivity, on the uh, right hand side is lower selectivity. So this graph is showing us that if uh, selectivity is high then um, uh, the speed up, the, the um, the speed up is more significant, while as uh, um, uh, otherwise the speed up is smaller. Um, this, yeah. So is this a fair comparison? This 13 hour runtime uh, is supposed only need to be run once, right? You run extraction over the code copy, so it can be used by all the subsequent queries. So if you compare this to one query, that's kind of unfair comparison. And your techniques is inverted, and maybe even early stopping can, maybe can also apply uh, on top of the extractions, it means you, you, uh, you first do all the extractions using the 13 hours and then you can apply these uh, techniques over these uh, fully extracted database. No? Yeah, I agree. So these are two modes of uh, computation. One is pre-computation, batch-oriented, compute everything, and the other is query-driven. And we argue that there are s scenarios for both mode of uh, extraction. Um, for example, for iterative, you could have um, so you don't have the full access to the entire document, for example, the legal documents. You kind of have to do query driven because the number of documents that you get out is limited, restricted. Or, um, or you don't, small companies don't have the computational uh, power to process, pre-process over all the documents and they want to do pointed, for example, you, you are, again, you are doing, uh, you, you are, you have the uh, whole, the email of the whole um, corporate, but then you are doing some investigation and you only want the documents that are specific to David, for example. You don't want to extract all the extraction, you only want for David, you don't want to process everything. So there are scenarios that you do want to do this exploratory, iterative, um, interactive, and query-driven extraction rather than pre-computation everything. But I agree that pre-computation does have its application areas. So, um, so this is the. I don't know if I have time. It's already. It's already a little late. Okay, so this is, a, um, uh, this is the um, one tech, uh, optimization technique that we submitted in the recent uh, uh, and accepted in the recent Sigma paper. It's called hybrid inference. I'll just go in a very high, uh, very high level what it is. So um, as you already know that I implemented different inference algorithm inside of the database. Hybrid, and a single query can actually be answered by different inference algorithms. And hybrid inference basically at runtime tries to figure out which inference algorithm is appropriate for which subset of the document and apply accordingly. So um, according to the structure properties. What, I, what do I mean by the structure properties of the graphical model? So we started out with two documents and when we apply a join uh, on this pair of documents it can result in a tree-shaped uh, graph, graph, uh, graph model. And if we do inference on it, we should use some product algorithm because it's exact and it's polynomial. Um, on the other hand, if we change the first document a little bit, the join on top of it actually results in a cyclic graph, which um, we should use the MCMC algorithm. So the hybrid inference basically, um, at, after it's, the model is instantiated, it forks into two execution paths, um, deciding whether the, uh, the structure is a tree structure or a cyclic structure, uses different inference algorithm and then union in the end. So using this kind of hybrid inference um, to optimize the query execution, we find that it's five to ten times more efficient than the mono uh, monotonically applying the general inference algorithm over the entire corpus. 
So as a conclusion, um, I, have, uh, 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 I have described a number of applications that require probabilistic data analysis. I have described BaseStore, a probabilistic database system that efficiently implement uh, graphical models and inference algorithms. Um, I described new algorithms for answering probabilistic queries and uh, improve query answers and reducing false negatives by as much as 80%. And finally, I talked about a number of scale-up techniques that can achieve orders of magnitude speed, speed up for interactive queries. This is a number of related work I'm not going into. Um, so I have uh, other uh, collaborations with different research labs um, during my PhD. Uh, other my thesis, other than my thesis work, oh, but this is related. So my um, inference algorithm that I described, like the Turby algorithm and so on, is incorporated into a MAD library. Uh, it's a collaboration with EMC. So they, uh, the MAD library basically is a statistical data analysis library. It's open source. You can check it out. Um, it's uh, it's both do text analysis and clustering and classification and so on. It's uh, in database uh, statistical analysis. And uh, I also collaborated with uh, IBM Almaden and uh, Google on various projects. For future work, i really excited about the domain that I'm in, which is trying to use um, advanced stati uh, statistical methods to um, analyze large amounts of data. And I think that there is a lot of challenges in this domain, both uh, in, in building infrastructure and systems to deal with these uh, large-scale data analysis and to look at different applications, both <coughs> in social sciences and in health inf informatics, to apply these algorithms or even inventing new algorithms. And finally, um, I think um, there's a need for a high-level language or interface or visualization for people to manipulate these uh, statistical models and to apply to large amounts of data. And uh, with that, um, I conclude. I, I, uh, so I, this is a pointer to uh, based or uh, project that you can get more detail. And this is the pointer to the MAT library, which is an open source statistical library and database. And that's all. Thank you very much. So I have a very practical question. So you have this uh, information extraction as your main driving application. Uh, I might personally have uh, used a few of these uh, open source or information extraction tools. Uh, normally they only output the most competent extraction result. Uh, seldomly do they output the probabilities. And it's even more rare to see they output a model, a graph model uh, in their output. So how do you see to make this push this into database so that you can utilize these uh, graph models. Uh, so the these models do so it depends on which information extraction toolkit you use. There is rule-based information extraction which doesn't generate probabilities, and there are um, machine learning communities that all their tools are probabilistic, but because you're not seeing them because they don't think people are going to use them, so they they are inherent in these probabilistic models. They are not generating them because their mindset is our output will be put into a database for peer to query. So there is no need to generate probabilities or uncertainties. So, but they are there for this set of models. Now, whether these are uh, important, these probabilities are important, I did have an uh, example earlier why these uncertainties are important because the top one extraction might not be correct and you want to involve humans or involve um, statisticians to look into the uncertainties, especially in the case that um, for, like I was talking to a national security person that really wants the uncertainties in the text because the top one doesn't capture what they are looking for and they want weak evidences to combine to alarm and so on. So for these cases, you do want alternatives rather than just the top one. I guess the question is really what motivates these uh, uh, tool builders to expose their underlying models, which may be built on a lot of training data they have to, to the outside world. Um, I think we have to come up with the, um, so I think right now there are, there are really no, currently there are no uh, killing, killer app that really utilize these probabilities and uh, generate values out of. And uh, part of it is chicken and egg problem because there's no tools. So 
it's a part of coming up with killer app and having the tools to deal with them. <coughs> yes? So, a very simple example where you're looking for a match to, um, you're trying to match it uh, against the city name that's in the document, and you want to only match documents where the probability of the city name being correct is greater than 0.8 from the extraction. So, my understanding is that. So to get that, so the, the, the graphical model will give you a probability of a sequence of things. Yeah. To get the probability of an individual entity or subsequence being extracted, you've got to compute a sum and not a max. Yeah. So my understanding is that in your current implementation, uh, you, you do implement something like that to sum yeah. up. So the question is, during the process of that sort of <clears throat> forward, backward like thing, you can introduce any number of positive or negative constraints, right? Right. Is that are those is the ability to introduce constraints reflected in the query language in some way? Um, so the probabilistic selection actually is conditional the Cherby. It does so in a, uh, in a probabilistic selection if you say that um, But if I want if I want specific I have specific requirements. So when you're when you're summing up over all these different paths to compute the probability of C, you can constrain the set of Yes, paths. you can specify evidence in the label in so the probabilistic uh, in, in a token table, there is a probabilistic column called label, and uh, before it was all empty. It needs to be inferred, there is no evidence in it. But if you want to pose some constraints, say that um, Obama is always a person, for example, then you can do that by specifying that labels. Or, or, or for example, you know, I, I want to do this probabilistic matching, but I want to ignore sequences where the previous thing was a person or something. Yeah, if you have more general constraints, then there has to be a better way to do that. Is there, is there a way in query language currently to express those constraints? Uh, not in general, but there are ways to do simple ways. Like, like what I said, if you want to fix that one certain token is uh, labeled in a certain way, you can do that. But more generally, so for example, if you want, you, if you want David to be a person always, or, or just this occurrence of David to be person, uh, and this, this occurrence of Big Apple to be city, you can do that. You can just uh, fix just the like there's a rich space of possible constraints you could, you could describe in, in the process of formulating the query that mm -hmm. would, you know, yeah. there's a particular point that right. you could stick it in, in this match. I mean, I'm thinking of, so for example, the work of Aaron Kulata, right, on, they did Yes, similar. yes, yes, uh, uh, that, that's part of our related work, and we, we were having that in, in mind, but in, in that in that paper, the kind of constraint is like uh, the user specifies specifically that this label should be labeled this way. So that's the kind of constraint we do support. But more general constraints like, um, I don't know, like before an adjective, there always have to be a noun or after adjective, there are like this kind of more general first order constraints. But we do support um, what is supported in, uh, in that paper, which is the evidence. So what happens if you go from the smart call models to the semi smart call models? How much software thing has to change? Because I saw that um, most of your examples exploited the smart call models, right? It's just one token. I'm doing really join on the tokens and so on. You, you mean how, how do I extend to HMM? No, the semi smart call model. Semi smart call model. Oh, okay. It's a segment, not a token. Uh, that this, I, assume that there's a yeah, I read the semi Markov model paper. I think they are, their inference is also an extension of variation to the Viterbi algorithm. Now, I don't um, quite get what are the um, differences there. Um, do you? I, I know it. I think what they said is uh, um, their computation is similar to Viterbi and it's a variation of the Viterbi. I, I didn't look very closely into that. Thank you.